Hi there. This is Tor Lacey with a lecture about sedimentary rocks. The main learning objectives for this lecture are describe how sedimentary rocks form, classify and name common sedimentary rocks, and recognize common sedimentary structures and depositional environments of sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks always form on Earth's surface. They commonly show layering, known as stratification, and can contain evidence of ancient life in the form of fossils. They are the product of weathering of rock exposed in Earth's surface and formed through the process of lithification and precipitation. Sedimentary rocks are the product of both destructive and constructive geologic processes. Mechanical weathering creates solid particles of sediment called grains or clasts while chemical weathering dissolves sediment in water. Erosion further weathers and transports sediment to a place of deposition. Deposition happens when a stream, glacier, wind, or ocean currents slow and lose energy, and their load of sediment will fall and accumulate in layers forming strata. Over time, the strata will be compacted and cemented into rock through a process called lithification. Sedimentary rock may also form through the process of precipitation. Precipitation is the opposite of dissolution and happens when dissolved minerals precipitate or fall out of water, forming crystals. Sedimentary rocks can be arranged into two categories, detrital, also called clastic, and non-detrital or non-clastic. Clastic sedimentary rocks form principally through the lithification of detritus or clasts grains of minerals and rock fragments. The source of rocks for sediments are typically composed of silicate minerals, so clasts are commonly silicate minerals, such as quartz and clays. Clastic rocks may show fine layering or lamination. non detrital rocks form through precipitation of mineral crystals. This happens through chemical reactions in water or from the biologic action of animals. Think of an invertebrate, like a snail building a shell to protect its body. In some cases, non detrital rocks are composed entirely of organic matter. Like igneous rocks, sedimentary rocks are named according to their texture and composition. For detrital sedimentary rocks, the texture is controlled by the size, shape, and sorting of the grains. Non detrital rocks do not contain grains, and therefore grains are not considered. Instead, Composition is the primary criteria used. Sorting is a measure of how uniform the grain size is within a body of sediment and reflects the energy of the erosional agent or mechanism that transported the sediment. For example, glaciers, while slow moving, are made of ice and have tremendous potential energy and can therefore transport sediment of all sizes. Consequently, grains deposited by glaciers are poorly sorted. In contrast, wind is only capable of transporting fine to medium-sized sediment, and therefore wind deposits will be well sorted. Streams, which transport most of the sediment on Earth's surface, will deposit progressively more well sorted sediment as stream flow slows. Angularity, or grain shape, reflects how much transportation grains of sediment have undergone. The greater the distance transported, the more rounded and more mature the grains. You might recall, with increasing maturity, sediment becomes more homogeneous. When considering the origin of detrital sedimentary rocks, it is helpful to think of streams, because streams are the principal erosional agent. This illustration represents the profile of a typical stream from where it begins at its source, in the mountains, to where it ends, in the sea. Along this profile, we can visualize the location of depositional environments for sediment of varying textures. Poorly sorted sediment will be deposited nearest the source, where streams are flowing down the steepest slopes and have the most energy. Moderately well sorted sediment is generally deposited as a stream slows, while the most well sorted sediment will be deposited near the end or mouth of a stream, where the water is flowing with the least energy and is only capable of transporting and depositing fine sands and silt. 
The primary criteria used in naming clastic sedimentary rocks is texture. More specifically, the size of the class or grains that make up the rock. Sorting and grain size are also used to name medium and coarse grain rocks. Composition is also used as a criteria when identifying different types of sandstone. Chemical sedimentary rocks do not contain grains, so class size, sorting, and shape are not used when describing the texture. Instead, composition is the primary criteria used to name chemical sedimentary rocks. Calcite is the most common composition, making up the most common types of chemical sedimentary rocks, limestones. Since limestones are made of calcite, all react with hydrochloric acid, as has already been demonstrated in this class. Other common compositions include silica, gypsum, and halite. This chart organizes common chemical sedimentary rocks by composition. Biochemical sedimentary rocks are most commonly forms of limestone and often contain fossils. Organic sedimentary rocks are composed of organic matter, like carbon, and result in making the material used in energy production, like oil, shale, and coal. Sedimentary rocks can contain internal structures that formed as the sediment was deposited or when sediment was disturbed after being deposited but before becoming lithified. These structures can provide valuable information about the depositional environment that existed where the rock originated. The most fundamental sedimentary structures are lamination and stratification, which were previously discussed. Some others include ripple marks that form perpendicular to the direction of wind or water flow and can be asymmetrical or symmetrical. Symmetrical ripples form where there is an oscillating current, like the surf zone of the ocean. The steeper side of asymmetrical ripples indicate the direction from which the current was flowing. Cross beds are large asymmetric ripples that form from sand dunes. Mud cracks are formed when mud dries and contracts, causing it to crack into a honeycomb-like pattern. Impression fossils left by animals, like burrow tracks or footprint impressions, or inanimate objects, like a piece of wood being dragged along the bottom of stream deposits, give us additional clues about past environmental conditions. Strata has been compared to the pages of a book, where the texture and structures of the sedimentary rock can be read like the pages of a book to tell us the story of the earth at the time they were made. For example, if the rock contains mature grains of very well-sorted and well-rounded sand that was deposited as crossbeds, we can assume that the environmental conditions needed to make sand dunes existed at the time the rock was made. Or, if the rock is composed of limestone and seashell fossils, then we can reason that the rock formed in the shallow ocean. That brings us to the end of this discussion on sedimentary rocks. I hope you enjoyed it, and thank you for listening.